the Luka Doncic injury. How he got injured, how it was diagnosed, how do we know that it's a minor injury, and what happens next. Stay tuned to find out. Hey everybody, Dr. Chris, orthopedic surgeon and sports medicine physician. Welcome to my channel, your number one stop for information on orthopedic injuries and their surgical treatment. That's a little doctor joke we like to make around here. If you're interested to find out more about my life as an orthopedic surgeon, be sure to follow me on Instagram or Twitter at @stableknees. Luka Doncic is a 20-year-old rookie sensation guard for the Dallas Mavericks. He was injured on December 14th of 2019 during the first two minutes of a game versus the Miami Heat. While driving to the hoop, he apparently injured his right ankle. X-rays taken at the arena were reported as negative. So how did he get injured anyway? The video shows that while driving to the hoop, he accidentally stepped on the foot of the Miami Heat guard, Kendrick Nunn. This caused him to roll his ankle to the outside. And this is what is known as a supination ankle injury. This type of mechanism can lead to injury of the ligaments on the lateral or the outside aspect of the ankle. These ligaments include the ATFL or the anterior talofibular ligament, the CFL, the calcaneofibular ligament, the PTFL or the posterior talofibular ligament, and finally, the syndesmosis, which is the ligamentous tissue which joins the tibia to the fibula at the level of the ankle. If the injury is severe, then a fracture or a dislocation may also be present. Typically, this type of injury is diagnosed with a physical exam and imaging studies. The basic aspects of the physical exam can be summarized as look, feel, and move. And with the physical exam, we are looking for findings that include looseness, tenderness, swelling, deformities, or crepitus. That just means grinding or popping or snapping. You know, kind of like the cereal, snap, crackle, pop. The requirement for imaging after an ankle injury are determined by the Ottawa ankle rules. Ottawa, the Ottawa ankle rules. And basically, these are a set of rules that guide the clinician or the physician in deciding whether x-rays are actually necessary after the ankle injury. The Ottawa ankle rules tell us that there are only a select number of instances where we should consider doing x-rays after an ankle injury. If they don't have any of these things, then they don't need an x-ray. It's likely not a fracture or dislocation. It's likely just a sprain. Because this is the NBA and because Luca had the possibility of being an MVP in only his first season, I think they took the x-rays to be extra cautious. The media reported that the x-rays were negative. However, they did not state whether they had also performed a stress view of the ankle. A stress view is an x-ray that is taken while the clinician or the physician is attempting to open up the space between the tibia and the fibula. Normally, the syndesmosis will hold this space together and will not allow the space between the tibia and the fibula to be opened up. However, if there is a syndesmotic injury, then when you perform a stress view, this space will open up or widen, telling us that the syndesmosis has been ruptured or injured. If the physical exam and the stress view x-rays reveal that there is no syndesmotic injury, then we can anticipate that Luca will be able to return to competitive play within 10 days to six weeks with appropriate rest and rehabilitation. If, on the other hand, there is a syndesmotic injury, then a surgical procedure may be required to stabilize the syndesmosis and a longer period of rest and rehabilitation will be required. Hopefully, Luca has the former and not the latter, and he'll be able to return to playing basketball quickly and without complications. So today we've been talking about the Luka Doncic injury. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And as always, that's been a word from Dr. Chris, not your everyday or though. Just a flesh wound.